Welcome to this Terraform AWS video. In this video, we are going to configure Terraform for AWS and launch an EC2 instance, including a VPC, a private and public subnet, security groups, variables, and everything that comes with it. We are also going to generate the key pair, which we are going to use for the EC2 instance. So basically in this tutorial, you're going to learn all the basic stuff you need in order to get started with Terraform or even create more complex things. We'll be able to go into the documentation of Terraform and therefore be able to expand this code as you would like. You can also search up um, the code I have provided here on the GitHub repository in the comments down below. So let's get started. First of all, we need to download Terraform. Once on the Terraform website under terraform.io, you can download your distribution. I'm using Windows here, so I'm going to download the Windows 64-bit version. I have already done this, and after you have downloaded it, um, you can just um, move it, extract it and move it to a location you would like. Uh, with me, just in the local disk C and out of the folder Terraform. So after you have placed it in there, the next step you need to do is add a path variable. So for that, go to control panel, um, under system, you can go to advanced system settings, environment variables, and here under path, just add a new environment variable. Here it's under C uh, slash the Terraform, so I don't have to do this. Uh, but if you don't have it, that's how you're going to add um, the path variable in there. Um, after Terraform is configured, you should be able to open it within your shell. In this case, I'm using Windows PowerShell, and if you type in Terraform, um, lowercase, into Windows PowerShell, you should see something like this with the main commands and the commands you can execute. So, um, now you need to navigate to your folder. Um, as I have mentioned, this is the code I have already prepared. Um, I have prepared the code in advance um, since it would take too much time to type this out manually right now. Um, so, let us go through this. Uh, if you're not familiar with um, AWS, first of all, we are creating a VPC um, in which we are going to have our resources. So let me explain what the VPC here is. So here is our VPC, which is um, a part of the cloud that is isolated for our use. This is not 100% sure under the hood AWS still um, redistributes this across different users. But for us, we are getting our own virtual machine where we can host our uh, virtual private cloud. So our VPC is going to have different availability zones. And those availability zones, um, you mostly have two to three within a region. A region is a geographical location, which could be um, UK, West US, East US, Europe, and so on. And within that, uh, you have availability zones, and each region has two or three of them, uh, which are data centers that actually have um, where that have the equipment and hardware where your code is running, where your resources are located. So um, those are basically the servers. And within that availability zone, uh, we are going to create a public and private subnet. So this means that users coming uh, to our services, um, like in most applications, you're going to have a public IP uh, where your traffic is coming to, where you could have some websites hosted or um, some APIs that need to be accessed over the internet. And then you have private IPs that can only be accessed within those VPC. So it's not available over the internet. And you could have stuff like databases, um, certain servers, uh, microservices, or something else in there which is not available to the public. Uh, so this is the example we're going to launch here. It is a bit more complicated, but it's going to help you learn Terraform faster. So here is our VPC, and this is how we define our VPC. We're going to define our CIDR block, um, which is going to give us a range of IP addresses that we can use. Um, you can research this in more detail if you would like. Um, then we have the instance tenancy, which is default in this case. Um, and this is what I have mentioned with AWS. If you would like to have our own 
100% isolated VPC, which is not shared with other AWS users, then we would need to change this. Uh, but uh, if you're not having some really strict security reasons for that, you should leave this as default. Um, we are going to enable DNS support, um, class links and um, are not needed and we are going to enable DNS host name so that we can resolve a host name. And then we are also going to tag it. Um, if you would like to see what other parameters you can set, you can go to the Terraform documentation for that. Then here we are having our subnets. So we are having three public subnets and we are going to have three private subnets, uh, which have their own um, dedicated IP ranges. And those are going to be in different availability zones, which are going to look the following. So EU West 1A, EU West 1B and EU West 1C. This is how availability zones are tagged. Uh, then we're going to have our private subnets, um, which are again spread out over the same availability zones. The next thing is we're going to have an internet gateway. Um, the internet gateway is going to be there to allow communication to the internet. So this is going to look the following. Here we are going to have our internet gateway and our traffic is going to go through the internet gateway and the IP addresses are going to be resolved to the public subnets here. And the public subnets can communicate with the private subnets here or the private subnets can communicate with anything else within the VPC. Um, we also need to define a routing table, which is going to be our main public routing table. And this is how you define things in Terraform. So you specify a resource, then you specify a name for the resource. So in this case, um, so the type of the resource, this is a VPC, this is a subnet, um, this here is an internet gateway. And in order to see how you specify those resources, you can need to refer to the Terraform main documentation. So here we are going to have our routing table. And after that, we need to associate our public subnets um, in order to be reachable through the internet gateway um, over the internet. Um, so we need to define our subnet ID. In order to access our subnet ID, we just specify the parameter. So we go to an AWS subnet, and if we go to an AWS subnet, we are referring to those resources here selected. Then if we go to a main public one, we are then referring to our main public one here. And then we can access, for example, the ID of it. And there is a certain number of variables that you can access per default here, and ID is one of them. ID or name, for example, are the most commonly used ones. Uh, so now we can specify a version in Terraform. So this is version, uh, so we require version 12, 0.12 as a minimum. I think the newest one is 4, 0.14 currently. And then we need to specify our variables. And in this case, um, I have specified the region. In this case, it is EU West 1 and path to our private key. So we need to generate the key pair for our EC2 instances. Uh, we are going to generate that right now. Uh, for this, we are going to use SSH keygen, uh, which is a pretty simple way of generating those keys and we're going to define the key name as my key. And you can skip those phrases. And now we should have a my key and my key public. Uh, our provider is going to be AWS with the specified region of AWS region. Now uh, we need to define our next resource, which is going to be our AWS instance. And one thing also to notice in Terraform is that all the files need to end with TF and you can have as many files as you would like and you can keep whatever you would like in whatever file you would like. So it doesn't really matter how we split this. We could, for example, just use the instance in the key.tf and the volume somewhere else. So uh, we are going to use an AMI here, which means that we are going to use a predefined 
EC2 instance with the predefined software on it from AWS and our instance type is going to be T2 Micro. Uh, we need to specify our subnet. Again, we are referring to AWS subnet, main public one and ID. Now, our security group, so this is a list here uh, where we want to allow SSHing into our instance so that our instance is available through SSH. And we're going to go and have a look on that uh, security group shortly. And then uh, we need our key, which is uh, the key we have generated just now. And now we are also going to attach an EBS volume. And that EBS volume is going to have a size of 20 gigabytes. And this is just going to be some extra space on our EC2 instance. And we also need to create an attachment. In this attachment, we are going to attach our EBS volume 1. Um, to our EC2 instance. So as you can see, um, it is quite similar uh, how you define resources. The main part is knowing what you need to define and how you can access the data. And for that, you always need to refer to the official documentation. And there you can see all the variables that you need. And let us go to our security group here, which is just allowing SSH again. We need to put that security group in a VPC ID, uh, which we have done here. We give it a name and description. And the next thing is we need to define an egress and ingress. So we define what can go into the security group and what can go out of it. So it is basically reachable from anywhere over port 2020. And it can reach from the security group to anywhere um, on all ports. Um, and we are using here for the ingress TCP protocol and we have just added a tag here, which is optional. So this is pretty much it. Um, it is now time to uh, configure our Terraform setup. So now the next step is to initialize our Terraform. So for that we need to um, type in Terraform init which is going to initialize um, everything. So it is going to download um, plugins. It is going to initialize our environment, create a log file, and later on have a state file. So the next thing uh, we can do is type in Terraform plan, which is going to plan out the resources uh, that are going to be added to AWS. So as you can see, our subnets, our VPC, and so on. So now we can type in apply and that apply is going to actually deploy those resources to AWS. Now you just need to type in yes and wait the time for the resources to be created in AWS. So this can take some time depending on what resources you are creating. So after it's finished, we can go to AWS and check out if the resources are really created. I'm going to go to my dashboard and we have an instance running here. So let's open this and this is our instance running. It is still initializing. So let's wait for it to initialize before we SSH into the instance. And as you can see, it's in our private subnet, which we have defined 10.01. And the last one um, is going to be assigned by AWS. Um, this is our public address. Um, we have our instance ID, our AMI that we have used, and so far so good. We haven't really configured much more. We can go to the storage and check out the storage, the EBS volume that we have added here. Our 20 gigabyte volume should be right here. We can also go and check out our VPC. Just type in VPC and see if that resource uh, has also been properly created. When we go to our VPCs, uh, we can see that it is created here, our main VPC. So this pretty much wraps it up. Um, our goal here was not too complex, but I think it should be more than enough to get you started and familiar with Terraform and AWS and the main concepts you will be working with. So. When you are done with this, uh, don't forget to destroy everything. So for that, type in Terraform destroy. And 
if you do that, uh, all the resources are going to be removed. Since we have created some resources here for which we would need to pay money, um, it is also good uh, that you don't forget to do this step. So I hope this video was useful. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments or send me an email, which is also in the description down below. You can also check out uh, noveltechmedia.com if you need more help or you can check out some courses over there. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.